Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Oh, one of those, Pokemon 980, Chief Editor, disabling a new user with my nephew Teddy. What's that? And welcome to this Double Bill Week Run Review Challenge. Can we you two recent releases on the respective lunch weeks? Well, a Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask review says that I can't. This week, I reviewed the latest century of the Creative Assembly's Total War series. Can this game lead siege to Tamina in three days? Oh, well, without further ado, rally your armies, and let's find out. Round one, fight! The Creative Assembly's Total War franchise is one of the most unique franchises in the strategy game subgenre. Its blended civilization-esque 4x elements and tactical-based combat similar to Tom Clancy's and more makes this game stand out. The series started in 2001 with Total War Shogun. Since then, the series has expanded to various periods of history, but the rise of the Roman Empire is depicted in Total War Rome 1 and 2. Seriously, the less said about that, the better. In recent years, the franchise expanded to the fantasy tabletop battlefields of Warhammer, thanks to a merger between the UK tabletop game maker Games Workshop and Sega. This time, the Creative Assembly takes us back to the Bronze Age. You play as a leader from the Egyptians, Hittites, and Canaanites, as you battle for dominance in the Middle East through diplomacy or military conquest. The Axis ability scores are as follows. To kick things off, visibility gave an 11. Seems like the Creative Assembly were not messing around when they developed this game. There is a feature called Alliance Colors. This handy little feature changes every faction's color to reflect its diplomatic stance towards you. You can attach a color line mode to this game. This makes the game perfectly accessible for players who have visual impairments. Next up, Audibility gave it 10. As part of the course of the series, every piece of spoken dialogue is subtitled in a text box located in the upper right corner of the screen. Also, this game has a subtitle function which can be enabled and disabled through the audio section of the options menu. This allows a hearing impaired player to enjoy the game. Next up, Mobility is scored a 9. As part of the course for a strategy game, the game is primarily controlled by the mouse. Left click selects units and settlements, right click issues move and attack orders. These are customizable hotkeys for competitive players. If you played a Total War game before, this game will feel familiar to you. Last but certainly by no means least, gameplay given 9.5. In short, this game had a lot of potential. There are a lot of missed opportunities here. For example, they could have taken a mythological approach and added myth units like Anubites and Minotaurs. Too bad they didn't. Maybe a future DLC, but not in the base game. But the realism of the game more than makes up for it. In battles, dynamic weather can affect the outcome. A battle could start on clear weather, but midway through the battle, a sandstorm can roll on which negatively impacts an army's fighting ability. For example, during a sandstorm, ranged units like slingers and archers are less accurate and melee units' attack power is drastically reduced. Worst of all, the units on the battlefield take damage over time during a sandstorm. Other than that, it's just a standard Total War game. It's been a while since a mainline historical title in the Total War series. The last one was Attila, released back in 2015. So in summary, Total War Feral is a return to the historical elements of the Total War franchise we've been waiting so long for. And might not live up to the legacy of Shogun 2, nor the fast pacing of Warhammer, it's still it's a pretty solid title nonetheless. And the overall score is a highly respectable 98.75%. Now it's time for a few open questions. The date of writing of this review marks the day that after a back and forth legal battles against industry regulators and Xbox's biggest competitor PlayStation, Microsoft completed the acquisition of the biggest publisher of games in the industry today, Activision. It has been hailed as one of the biggest days in gaming history. So, what do you think of this? 
In your opinion, what do you think is the biggest moment in gaming history? What's next for the Xbox brand? Let me know down in those comments. Okie dokie guys, I'll see you guys in the next review. This is Spartan Commander 1990 Chief Editor of the Civil Gamer Review setting out. I'll see you guys in the next review. Or oh, by the way, one down, one to go.